Hi, my name is Devin Knight. I'm the president of training at Pragmatic Works. And in this video, I'd like to introduce you into the topic or the technology known as Power Virtual Agents. Now, for many of you, Power Virtual Agents may be a totally new concept. So I wanna discuss, first of all, what it is, why you might use it, what benefits that you get from Power Virtual Agents that you might not get from other tools that are available. So let's start with the what it is. Power Virtual Agents is a chatbot tool that allows you to design chatbots on your own without necessarily having a degree in IT or being a data engineer or even being a data scientist. You can create your own chatbots that have AI capabilities built into them without being an expert in any of those tools. Power Virtual Agents is part of a platform known as the Microsoft Power Platform, which has many different tools that are really designed for end users at mind, or I should say, you know, citizen developers at mind, to allow you to be able to develop your own solutions without needing IT to be there every step of the way. And that's really powerful when it comes to things like virtual agents or chatbots, because it allows you as the subject matter expert in how to communicate with your customers to be the one that also defines how those conversations happen with your customers. And you can build these automated conversations so that they have a friendly and cheery attitude and so that they're able to answer questions very clearly because they, the answers are provided by those that would normally have these live conversations with customers to begin with. And so what this video is going to be designed around is how to get started, where to go to get started with Power Virtual Agents, and then how to explore it once you get into Power Virtual Agents. So let's go ahead and pop into my screen here to be able to show you exactly what this looks like. So I have navigated here to powervirtualagents.com. Uh, you can see when you log into powervirtualagents.com, there is information about pricing, where you can learn more, the community around Power Virtual Agents, but you can also read through the description on this page to get a better understanding of exactly what Power Virtual Agents can do for you, how it can integrate into either your website or Microsoft Teams or other things that you may have, including, like I said, Microsoft Teams you can see right here. So you have all of these nice integrations that are available that can tie in very tightly into systems that you already have and be able to provide these kind of conversations directly with customers. Now for our example, I have an account already. I'm gonna end up signing up for a trial as we go through this, but I'm gonna come up to the very top and click sign in. And once I select sign in, I'm going to choose an account or type in an account that I already have ready to go right here. And I'm gonna plug in my information here. This is just a little demo account I use for today. And I'm gonna pass in my login. Let's make sure I type it right. And once we're signed in, we're going to create what's known as a bot. And so a bot is a chat bot where you can have these conversations with your users. And so first we're gonna uh, sign up for our trial. We're gonna make sure that we provide which region we're in. So we're in the United States. So I'll go ahead and hit that and hit start free trial. And once I've selected that, I'll then be able to go through the process of creating our bot. And that'll be the first step. That's actually what it's gonna jump into here immediately is the creation of our bot. We'll be able to also select which environment we want the bot to be part of. So one thing to note is you can create multiple environments with inside the Power Platform, and you can have this bot live in the same environment that your Power Automate and your Power App Solutions live in as well. But we're gonna go ahead and name the bot. I'm gonna call this my Contoso bot. That's just a sample uh, company name here. We're gonna tell it what language we want our bot to be in. And by the way, you can have multiple languages. However, only one language per bot. So if you have multilingual uh, customers or customers that speak different languages, then you will have to create separate bots as of today for each one of those conversations in the different languages. So if you have one that needs to be in Chinese, then you'll need to create a bot for the, your Chinese users. If you have one that needs to be in English, then you'll need to create an English speaking bot. So in this scenario though, we're gonna go ahead and select that we want English US. And then you can also, like I mentioned a moment ago, you can choose which environment you want this to be part of. Do I want this to be part of my Contoso environment, which is my company's default environment? Or I can also choose a different environment here, like my dev lab admin one, which I'll go ahead and choose that for this example. All right, so I've chosen the environment that I want for this example, and I'll hit create. And this will take sometimes a minute and a half to two minutes to create your bot. 
but then once your bot is created, it's gonna create several things in here for you. Uh, one thing that you'll find that it's gonna create is a several topics. And so what you're primarily doing whenever you're working with Power Virtual Agents is you're creating and designing topic conversations. And a topic is basically a, a thing that your customer or your end user may ask about. So they may ask about your return policy or they may ask where your store locations are. And so you would likely have different topics for each of those distinct kind of conversations that may happen. So now you can see that my bot has been created. I'm gonna go ahead and select that I want to explore the bot. And you'll see it's still kind of working on creating the bot right now. You can tell up top here where it says it's creating the bot right now. It's still working on a few elements here, but that's fine. But you'll find there's some documentation in the middle of my screen that I can explore. But then the core thing that we're really going to get into as we start to work with this, and the bot is now done, you can actually see that it says bots created here and everything is on the left-hand side no longer grayed out. And we can start to build or modify this bot that's been created for us. So you can explore the bot by going into areas on the left-hand side. So on the left-hand side, you'll see things like topics, you'll see entities, you'll see analytics. So you can actually analyze how well your chatbot is responding to conversations that come up. So for example, if your chatbot is constantly missing the mark and your customers are constantly not getting their questions answered, then you may of course go into the analytics section and be able to view where that's occurring and then that encourages you to change the topics. And one of the things that you'll find when it comes to building chatbots is it's a circular process. You'll create the chatbot initially, then you'll find things that need to be changed with it. And you'll constantly kind of be going back and forth and making modifications based on what the analytics section is providing you as far as intel on how accurate your bot is answering questions. The publish section is where you can actually take your solution and publish it so that it can be embedded in a website or embedded in Teams or embedded in Facebook. The publish section is where you'll actually publish your, your, your chatbot. And then manage is where you can kind of get into things like if I want to add in any additional skills, if I, if I am a developer, for instance, I can add in additional capabilities where I integrate into other REST APIs that I might have. You can do that all under the manage section. But your first area that you'll generally start with when you begin with your chatbot is the topics area. In the topics area, you'll, you can see that there's going to be several topics that have already been created for me. So this will take a moment here to load on my screen, but you can see that there are four sample topics. These are user topics that are already created for me. And then there's eight system topics that are already created for me as well. Now the system topics are gonna to be here always. They're created for you as uh, normal things that you would want to do within inside of a chatbot. So things like uh, signing off, like telling someone goodbye, or having someone uh, fill out a survey, all of those things like end of a conversation kind of things uh, or an escalation, those are all system topics that are built in here for you and you will leverage those as you go to build out your topics on your own. So those system topics are in here already and you will leverage them, but generally they're kind of just generic parts of conversations that you have with every chatbot. These other ones, these user topics that I mentioned a moment ago, these lessons one through four, these are placed in here to actually teach you how to work with Power Virtual Agents. So if you are new to Power Virtual Agents, you can leverage these four topics to learn how to interact with it. And so we're gonna explore one of these topics as we learn Power Virtual Agents in this video. So let's go jump into, let's say for example, lesson three. And as we jump into lesson three topic, this will show us what kind of things that you need to have with inside of each of your topics. Obviously, you're going to have a name of a topic. You're not gonna call yours lesson three. That's more just a teaching mechanism here for you. But you might add in here a more proper name of the generically speaking discussion that you're having here. So if you're trying to have a discussion about buying, you could put something like purchase products. That might be the name of my uh, topic. Then with inside of your topic, you're going to have five to 10, or you should have five to 10 trigger phrases. And these trigger phrases are what are going to determine when this topic is kicked off or initiated. So generally you wanna have these topic, or I should say trigger phrases, very distinct from each other. So you shouldn't have a lot of carryover. They shouldn't all be basically the same thing or different, different iterations of the same thing. They should be fairly distinct verbs or, or uh, ling linguistics that are used here. So that way there's no carryover between each of them. Uh, but you do wanna try and have five to 10. 
and you can uh, make them fairly succinct. You don't have to have a sentence here uh, because the AI capabilities that are built into Power Virtual Agents will actually pick up if someone uses a very similar phrase or if someone uses a phrase that's kind of known as a synonym, it will likely still pick up the conversation or the trigger phrase that you have with inside of your topic. But these trigger phrases are what are going to initiate this conversation from happening. So. Once you either add more trigger phrases or if you're happy with the ones that you have, you can go over to the top right or just above me here where you can select the author authoring canvas. And this is where you'll actually be able to see what the conversations will look like. So if I select the authoring canvas here and go ahead and select OK, I think I need to save this first because I did rename it. So I'm going to go ahead and save it first and then we'll select our authoring canvas. But now I can select the authoring canvas, and this is where you can actually see what the interaction with inside of Power Virtual Agents looks like. So this is where you'll build out your conversations. And so if I scroll a little bit over here on the right, let's see if my scroll bar will cooperate. There we go. I can see here that we have uh, our trigger phrases are up at the top. So each of our five trigger phrases are up at the top. And then if one of those trigger phrases is initiated, it's then going to bring up this message, I'm happy to help you place your order. And so that's the initial thing that's sent to our end users if these trigger phrases are initiated. So we ask, we, we tell them we're happy to help them place their order. And then the question is asked, to what state uh, will you be shipping? Because apparently there may be some difference depending on what shape state they're shipping to. So a couple things here. You'll notice the top here, this is a message. And you can add messages by adding the little plus sign here. You can add a node. And you can see the types of things you can add. You can add questions. You can add conditions. You can also add in actions that can call into things like Power Automate flows to initiate additional executions or additional elements with inside of your virtual agent. You can also just show a message. So this is showing a message right here, where you can just show a plain message where you send your users a message of some kind. And then you can also do topic redirects where I can send them to a different topic based on how they are, what, what place they are within inside of the conversation tree here. All right, so we have messages, we have questions, and then the questions are going to output variables. So you can have variables with inside of your uh, bots or even with inside of a particular topic. So you have various granularities of variables. It can be either be a variable that can be used anywhere with inside of your bot, or it can be a variable that's just with inside of this topic. But this variable is going to output the response of the question to what state will you be shipping? And so with inside of this variable, which you can see on the right here is called PVA underscore state, we're going to capture the response to that question in the variable. And depending on how they answer, you can see there's a couple options here, Washington, Oregon. If we move over here a little bit, California, depending on their response, we're going to send them down a different path. And then we also have a alternate path. If they don't answer any one of those, there is a final condition here that they happen to live in a different state. So if they're not in one of those three states, they are sent down this final condition or this alternate condition where we tell them about the additional shipping because apparently they're in a state where we have additional shipping cost. And we sell, ask them, is that acceptable? And if it is acceptable, then we go ahead and bring them back in. So you can see that there's these different nodes and different paths that can be brought together depending on the way that your conversation is happening. And so I really do encourage you to explore these sample topics or these uh, example topics that are in here because they will teach you a lot about how to work with Power Virtual Agents. You can see that there are different questions that you'll oftentimes ask. And if we start to explore this a little bit, you can actually test this out by using the test bot right here. So I can turn on things like track between topics. So that way, if I do jump to a different topic, you can actually see how that topic flow occurs. So I'm going to select this track between topics, and then we're going to use the test bot. And I'm going to ask something about um, buying a product. So I can say something like, how do I buy a product? And let's see if the AI capability will pick up and bring me into this flow. So uh, it did. And you can see, even though I didn't use the exact phrase, buy product, I used the phrase, how do I buy a product? It, the AI capability in here detected that, hey, I should really send this conversation into my purchase products topic and then have the, the, the conversation flow go from there. So you can see where it's taking me through, where you see the green checkbox. Uh, that's where you know what point you are within inside of the conversation. And so it says, uh, to what state will you be shipping? 
Well, I happen to be from the state of Florida, not from Oregon, California, or Washington. So I'm gonna type in Florida, and that's gonna send me down the alternate path on the right, where it's gonna ask me another question where it says, there will be an additional shipping charge of 2750. Is that acceptable? And I can say yes or no here. Now, based on my response, that's gonna be leveraging another variable. Now, one of the neat things about testing the bot is there is an option here where you can actually test your variable usage right here. So if I select this option, it will show me what variable value is being captured as I use the tool. So if I select that little icon here, this will show me that right now it's captured the variable value of Florida, but I can also say, hey, yes, this is acceptable. And then you'll notice that it captures the, the, the next variable value of true for okay shipping rate. And then that sends me down this path here where I can tell it, what item are you interested in purchasing? Will uh, We are focused on a few, I few quality items. And so I can pick whether I'm looking for a desktop computer, a laptop computer, or a gaming computer. And let's say I select gaming computer, and that will send me down another path where it's gonna give me some more information. You can see it's got, it's got a little fun in here where it says, go get them, tiger. So you can really adjust these. You can make uh, and, and take from topics that are already created. You can even copy topics. There's even this concept of suggested topics that I'll show you in a future video. So Power Virtual Agents, super powerful tool. I highly encourage you to take a peek at how you might be able to use it. This was just a quick introduction to the tool, but in the future videos, I'm gonna show you how you can do things like suggested topics, how you can create a topic from scratch, how you can publish these uh, bots once you create them. And so look forward to some future videos with you on this, but that's it for today's video. Hope you enjoyed it and look forward to showing you more in the future. Thank you so much.